SLT Fiber and experience the power of fiber technology. Sri Lanka's only super fast internet connection. SLT Fiber. Call 1212 now. Tonight, quicker to Chennai than to Colombo. Prime Minister calls for regional cooperation as Sri Lanka's third international airport opens for business. There's tremendous potential for collaboration between India and Sri Lanka. Now it will be easy for us to go to Chennai than to go by road to Colombo. Three polls jostling. Gotabe camp critical of government's growth achievements. Ah, projected per capita growth will be around 2.6. We have the lowest. If you take the SAC countries as a whole. Sajid Camp counters the claim. Now we are in an election year 2019 and we are estimated to post a primary balance in 2019 too. Avant-garde case controversy. Miss Sanka Senadi Pati remanded. Almost over the line. The UK and EU agrees on a Brexit deal ahead of a European leaders' meeting. All these stories and much more comes your way on 1st at 9 this Thursday, the 17th of October 2019. From Adha Derana, this is Adha Derana 1st at 9. Fair and lovely men, they have a passe. Marks are to villa, fairness, very villa. Marks are to curl up. We are a fairness standard, they are very curragan. Fair and lovely men, anti marks cream. Live from Studio 24 in Colombo. Well, a very good evening to you and welcome to First at Nine, another there in a 24 Sri Lanka's news channel. I'm Katrina Chang. Now, Sri Lanka's third international airport, the Palali International Airport, now known as the Jaffna International Airport, was declared open this morning by President Maitri Pala Sirisena and Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe. A flight from Alliance Air, a subsidiary of Air India, descended on the runway of Sri Lanka's newly unveiled airport, marking the facility's maiden flight. Marking the occasion, Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe yet again highlighted the importance of maintaining good ties with regional nations, especially with neighbouring India, as South Asia is becoming the fastest growing region in the world. Jaffna International Airport, the third international airport in Sri Lanka, was declared open by President Maitri Pala Sirisena and Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe this morning. Upgraded at a cost of 2.25 billion rupees, the airport received funding to the tune of 300 million rupees from India. The facility comprises with a terminal building, an air traffic control room, a fire extinguishing unit and a building complex which will be utilized as the airport office. The airport runway, which was 950 meters in length, is also expanded to 1,400 meters. Marking the maiden flight landing at the newly opened airport, Alliance Air's ATR-72 with its airline officials and passengers from Chennai touched down at the Jaffna International Airport. It also marks Alliance Air's first international flight operation. Under the first phase, three flights per week will be operated between the two countries. We have the Alliance Air flying here for the first time and I hope this is the beginning to fly to Batiklo and uh, as we have requested, we've granted you permission to fly to Colombo and back. So we hope to see the full program being implemented. India has been helping us in the development of the war affected Jaffna. In many ways, funds have been given. You see the cultural center that's coming up, the KK Saab and now this airport. There's tremendous potential for collaboration between India and Sri Lanka, especially between South India and Sri Lanka. That also brings into account Jaffna, which is one of the closest areas to Sri Lanka. So now that we see the potential, let's work closer and work for the economic development of both countries. To say 
this is needed because the fastest growing region in the world is going to be the Indian Ocean. And around that, the fastest growing area is going to be South Asia. So we must learn how to cooperate. If we work together, we can develop fast. Whatever issues we have, we must settle by discussing among ourselves. Bilateral disputes, bilaterally, the regional issues regionally. This is the only way. We cannot afford to go to war. Now, if that means the end of the South Asian miracle and picking the pieces will be a difficult task. We need to understand and re-record and reiterate. This is not mere an opening of an airport, but rebuilding relationship between Sri Lanka, particularly the northern province and the rest of the world. Now, Honorable Minister, it will be easy for us to go to Chennai than to go by road to Kabul. It takes six hours, but Chennai is only 35. Presidential contender of the Sri Lanka Podujana Perumuna Gotabi Rajapaksa stresses that the door should be shut on the political culture where re election is sought using unfulfilled promises as a carrot. The former Defence Secretary addressed a series of rallies today, during one of which he said that it was the presidents of the UMP governments who felicitated him with the commendations. He also made it clear that all the pledges he make are not cheap election promises but are policy geared towards yielding correct results for the people. The Sri Lanka Podujana Peramuna District Convention was held under the patronage of its presidential candidate Gotabe Rajapaksa this morning. <laughs> There is a sense of disappointment in our politics. This is the truth. We must have policies that ensure we become of service to the nation. Otherwise, there are many who say this is our last chance. I wish to say that when we carry on this government in the future, I will make sure that we work as brothers and sisters. <laughs> Meanwhile, another public rally of presidential hopeful Gotabe Rajapaksa was organized in Rambukana this afternoon. We must change this political culture where they take the people for fools, promising to resolve issues if they return to power after failing to address concerns while in power. Asking to be elected to power without resolving prevalent issues are simply promises. I've always worked in the North and East and I have ensured that I followed through on all my responsibilities that were given to me. It was UNP presidents who felicitated me with commendations and medals. I like to take on challenges and I call on all of you to place your faith in me. Another in the series of rallies organized by the SLPP was held in Kuliapitiya today. Presidential contender of the party Gotabe Rajapaksa received a warm welcome from members of the public. These reliefs that we announce are not geared for elections but are designed to yield correct results. We are following a policy which will strengthen local industries. Fulfill your obligation and I shall fulfill my obligation of providing you with a country that is secure and prosperous. UPFA parliamentarian Kehliya Rambukwala says that the extraordinary number of candidates contesting the upcoming presidential election is a move designed to disrupt and break the voter base of the SLPP's presidential hopeful. The parliamentarian made this remark at a media briefing held in Colombo today. Latest indicators from the Asian Development Bank says that our projected per capita growth will be around 2.6. And the central bank has also agreed that second quarter of this year, the growth was only 1.6. So if you take the SAC countries as a whole, Bangladesh has the highest GDP of 8.1. We have the lowest and Afghanistan is also ahead of us. 
2.6 is something where the intervention of the government is minimal. They have completely failed the country. The press conference uh, said that the uh, party will uh, complain for the election commission for state media not giving enough coverage or like the mystery Yeah, 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 yeah that's right. Yes. Yeah. No, the state media, if you look at day before yesterday, just eight minutes for Sajid Primdas, then uh, comes Mahesh, second hike. Thereafter, Siritunga, who is the other candidate, and it's around uh, one and a half minutes for Gotabe Rajpaksa. We are monitoring all that, and we will be, uh, from time to time, we will keep informed to the election, 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 election commissioner. There are 35 candidates in this case, so will it be a hindrance for your candidate to reach the 50 percent mark? You see, I, I think it's a plan. There are few people whom they feel is that they are targeting a particular uh, sector of the public where they feel that that is more in favor of uh, Gotabe Rajapak. So they try to break or pull out some of the votes. And that's the idea. I don't think that will materialize as the campaign unrolls. People will know the motive behind having 35 candidates. And uh, that will be also amply explained in the platform and people are quite intelligent enough to understand the entire program of this having 35 candidates. Presidential contender of the New Democratic Front, Minister Sajid Premadas, insists that he is not ready to bow down to any conditions laid down before him in exchange for votes. During an audience with the business community of Anuradhapura, the minister said he would rather be defeated without conditions weighing him down. The presidential hopeful also had the bellicose words on the topic of action against members of the military pledging that war heroes will not be sent to the electric chair. Presidential candidate of the New Democratic Front, Minister Sajid Premadasa presided over a public rally in Variapula yesterday. <laughs> We will not betray the war heroes who sacrificed their lives for the country. They will not be sent to the electric chair. I am ready to stand in front of the international community on behalf of these war heroes. This country needs a leader of steel and I am ready to be that leader. <laughs> Minister Premadas then joined the public rally held in Digana of Mahava. Sri Lanka will not bow down to or surrender itself to any group of countries. I, as the son of Ranasinghe Premadasa, will accept the responsibility of making this proud nation a strong nation. Meanwhile, presidential candidate of the NDF, Sajid Premadasa, had an audience with the business community in Anuradhapura yesterday. <laughs> Newspapers report that some have come up with demands in exchange of tens of thousands of votes. I would like to be clear that they can put forth conditions to other candidates but not me. Some attempted to put conditions on me when handing the candidacy, but I rejected the conditions as I'm ready to go home defeated without any conditions. Presidential candidate Minister Sajid Premadasa arrived in Anuradhapura today and paid homage to the Jayasri Mahabodhi. He then visited the Sarananda Temple and Mihintalaya Temple in Anuradhapura. The Mahasangha is there to advise. I saw the way a member of the clergy addressed the gathering at the rally in Golface. It breaks the voter base. Minister of Finance Mangla Samravira revealed when the people who are gearing up to elect as 7th Executive President next month can expect the election manifesto of the new democratic front speaking at a media briefing today he the minister added that the new Monty law amendment act which is expected to give further independence to the central bank too has received cabinet approval and he hopes to table it in parliament before the end of the year Meanwhile, speaking at the same forum, State Minister Ran Vikramratna noted that the country is expected to post a primary balance this year as well, a feat unaccomplished during an election year. Now we are in an election year 2019 and we are estimated to post a primary balance in 2019 too. 
So this uh, cabinet memorandum particularly dealt with uh, para tariffs and we, we have told cabinet what the plan is and that the para tariffs namely PAL and SETS will be removed during the period 2020 to 2024 in phases and it will be about 20% of the applicable rates annually will be actually uh, removed. Then even if it comes to things like excise revenue right, and public health will be protected by broad basing excise tax base including tobacco products ensuring that duties are adjusted on the basis of a rule based annual indexation system. If you look at the history these have been fairly ad hoc. We are dealing systematically and we are dealing on the, ma on the macroeconomic and fiscal issues on a, basically on a long-term plan to bring macro stability after inheriting a very poor economy. Speaking at the media briefing, Finance Minister Mangla Samaravira revealed the date the party expects to unveil its manifesto. We will be releasing our manifesto on the 1st of November and we have a very realistic but a forward-looking manifesto. Uh, cabinet this week uh, passed regulations to set up a debt management agency. Can you please give us an idea about what that will entail? You want to say it? It's a debt management agency. Uh, yeah, at the, at the moment we have in principle in the central bank away from Yeah, we are in principle agreed on it and uh, in cabinet, right? But there is a process in actually doing it. As you know that the Monetary Law Act has been uh, approved by cabinet and then it will take its process in becoming a law. When you do that, we are strengthening the independence of the central bank. And when we maintain the independence of the central bank, one of the inbuilt issues has been the central bank managing the government's debt. So that's why a separate agency will be set up and there is in principle agreement to do so. Talking about the central bank, I'm also happy to say that the, the Monetary Law Amendment Act was also taken up and now being referred to the legal draftsman. The minister further noted that they hope to present the Monetary Law Act before the end of the year. Presidential candidate of the Movement National People's Party, MP Anrukumar Disanayaka, pledges that he will engage in politics that will ensure the safety and security of the country. Speak an event today, he also stressed that a government must be mindful as to how it utilizes its land in a way that does not cause environmental damage. The movement National People's Power unveiled its manifesto to protect the environment at an event in Amelipitiya today. The event was held under the auspices of its presidential candidate, MP Anura Kumara Disanayako. We must have a proper plan on how our land is utilized. Do we have such a plan in place? Politicians are only interested in garnering votes by stating how many houses or villages they constructed. They do not consider or understand the environmental damage that they cause by their actions. If there is deforestation taking place, a politician is behind it. We must ensure that we engage in politics that ensure the protection of our environment. This should be our first step. Chairman of Avant-Garde Maritime Services, Nisan Kasena Adipati, has been remanded until the 8th of November as per an order of the Colombo High Court. Sena Adipati was produced before the Colombo High Court today after being arrested over a case pertaining to the Avant-Garde arms trafficking incident. He had been receiving treatment at a hospital in Singapore when in Colombo High Court issued warrants to arrest him and he was arrested early this morning at the Bandar Naik International Airport upon his return to the island. Senadipati's legal counsel requested that the court grant his client bail since he underwent an operation in Singapore. The state counsel meanwhile objected saying Senadipati had been absconding court and after lengthy deliberation the bail request was refused with the court ordering Senadipati be remanded until the 8th of November. Senadipati was arrested for violating the overseas travel ban imposed on him. President of the Bar Association of Sri Lanka, President's Council, Carling Indatissa, calls for imposition of laws to regulate media in Sri Lanka as he acknowledges the challenging task of balancing the freedom of expression with protecting the rights of individuals. 
His concerns stretched beyond traditional media and the President's Council revealed that the Bar Association, together with the police, is working towards introducing a mechanism where content posted on so online social platforms can be considered as evidence in a court of law. Speaking at an event recently, he also lamented the lack of media and entertainment laws in the country, which leaves intellectual property rights unrecognized and its theft unabated. The book titled International Entertainment Law and New Media Law, authored by attorney at law Chanakya Jayadeva, was launched in Colombo recently. The event saw the participation of eminent persons in the legal fraternity, law enforcement, and artists. The media has no limits in this country. So therefore, while identifying the freedom of expression under Article 14 of the Constitution, it is absolutely necessary the rights of individuals are protected through some legal mechanism. We have nothing called entertainment law. We have nothing called media law, even though there are certain restraints which arise from the penal code and other penal provisions. The media law conceptually is not identified in this nation. I think it is important when you deal with individual rights and private rights that there are certain rules which are imposed on the freedom of expression without violating the fundamental freedom that the constitution identifies. The concept of trademark agents has not been recognized to the extent that it ought to be. Every piece of music that you listen to or you are compelled to listen to uh, when you call somebody and that somebody is on hold involves intellectual property. At the moment what happens in this country is that that intellectual property is not recognized to the extent that it ought to be. The owners of such rights are not compensated properly. The owners of such rights have nothing else to do but they are compelled to sell their rights to big companies, big institutions making money out of that creation. Those contracts have to come into the legal regime. The president of the Bar Association further stressed the need for stronger regulation of the country's social media. Social media has become a menace in this country for the simple reason that it is not controlled in any form. It permits people to say what they want to say without feeling for the feelings of others, without feelings for what is right. But there is a problem within the social media mechanism of proof. The BASL and the police are trying to come to a mechanism where contents of social media could be considered in court as material evidence. I am not, not only talking about hate speech here, I am talking of the obscene photographs, pornographic photograph of children which is circulating in the social media freely without any restriction, control or responsibility. That accountability is not set out in the law. So that is one of the biggest problems that we have in this country. We will now go into a short commercial break. Stay tuned for more news right after that. The Ministry of Development Strategies and International Trade hosted a nine European Union Sri Lanka Investor Dialogue recently, an instrument set up to resolve issues faced by investors from the European Union operating in Sri Lanka under the Board of Investment. The high-level meeting which promotes bilateral cooperation between the member states of the European Union and Sri Lanka was co-chaired by Minister of Development Strategies and International Trade Malik Samra Vikrama and European Union Ambassador Tung Lai Mark. Speaking there, Ambassador Mark said the investor dialogue has become a useful way to address issues concerning European investments and achieve results. He thanked the Sri Lankan authorities for their efforts in improving the country's business climate and highlighted that this forum is the way to prove to foreign investors that they are welcome in the country. Minister Samar Vikrama, meanwhile, stated that currently eight task forces are working on improving Sri Lanka's position on the Doing Business Index and pointed out that significant progress has been made. The head of mission of uh, several European Union states too participated in the talks and German Ambassador Jörn Rohd stressed the need to improve transparency. The next investor dialogue is scheduled to take place at the beginning of 2020.
Sri Lankan shares snapped two sessions of losses to end high today as investors picked up beaten down stocks. The benchmark stock index closed 0.40% higher at 5,890 points 09. The index dropped 3.18% so far this year. Meanwhile, foreign investors were net sellers of risk assets for 12th straight session. Equity market turnover was 526.4 million Sri Lankan rupees, less than this year's daily average of about 660.2 million rupees. Here's a look at how the markets performed during the day. The bond market, secondary market yield curve remained broadly unchanged, while market overall market witnessed a thin volume. In the stock market, bros rebound today with a negative sentiment witnessed in the previous two trading sessions with a price appreciation witnessed in Sri Lanka Telecom and LOLC. The volume recorded over one week low, while 52% of the turnover derived through crossing mates in commercial bank. A net foreign outflow were witnessed for the 12th conservative day with a high foreign participation. We will join you with news overseas right after this commercial break. Stay tuned. A Brexit deal has been agreed between the UK and EU before meeting of European leaders in Brussels. Boris Johnson and Jean-Claude Juncker called it a fair outcome and the EU Commission President has said that there was no need to extend the Brexit deadline, saying, quote, we have a deal, so why should we have a re prolongation? This will be a boost for the PM, but he still faces a battle to get the deal through Parliament, with ex-allies the DUP opposing it. Johnson urged MPs to come together to get Brexit done and get this excellent deal over the line. He added that this is the moment for the for to get Brexit done and then together to work on building the future partnership, which he believes can be incredibly positive both for the UK and for the EU. And on that note, we conclude this edition of First at Nine. Thank you for joining us and have a pleasant evening.